Insomuch as our brother, James Wesley Valentine, lived for the Lord God and died vanquishing evil. Wesley. All those years, I never knew he was Wesley. Oh, hold your umbrella up. Rain's dripping down your neck. His body to the earth and his soul to Almighty God. Earth to earth. Is there a reception or anything? Sandwiches and orange ale. There's only Mossy and Inspector Crittenden here. No one else came. He was teetotal, you see. Never touched a drop. Better get you straight back when it's over, Morgan. I'll come and say goodbye. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. 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 We were friends for 30 years, you know. <laughs> the Wheatstone Pond by Robert Westall, dramatised by Martin Reed, with John Dateen as Morgan. Rose is fetching your medication. Don't want it. I'm voluntary here, you know. Even so, you fell asleep as soon as we got back from the funeral. Same dream, was it? The children and... I can't remember. The shop. Who's looking after the shop? Mossy. I've let Mossy Hughes loose amongst thousands of pounds worth of antiques. I must be mad. What did you mean? Say goodbye. Oh, I'm going to America, I told you. There's a coach from Oxford to the airport in an hour. I'll email Mossy when I arrive. Oh, you don't have a computer, do you? You'll never get me up in one of those things. <laughs> what you've always said. Um, You're awake, are you, Mr Morgan? I've bought you happy pills and a cup of tea. Uh, just the tea, thanks. Uh, Hermione... I don't remember why you're going to America, but have a good flight. I'll try to be back for the grand opening. What? You know, the Wheatstone Park bowling green and tasteful petunia beds. It'll be a great improvement on that dirty old boating pond. Yeah. What boating pond? Hmm, Morgan, you really must try to remember. All in good time, Miss Stoddart. Your taxi's at the front door. All right. Morgan... I'm sorry, we... Well, you and I, you know. Another time, another planet. Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Bye, then. Drink your tea? You know, I'm quite interested in antiques. Where's your shop? Along the Dorchester Road. By the bridge. Genuine, are they? I mean, you hear such tales. What? Honest Jeff Morgan? Everything genuine. I mean, would I lie to you, lady? <laughs> Your friend. She's very classy. Known along? Am I any? Oh, a couple of months. She just turned up at the shop one day. Yes. I like the mirror. A bit fly blown, but the frame seems remarkably well preserved. Yeah, but I like that. You a dealer? No, archaeologist. Currently marking time at the Oxford County Museum. I specialise in old toys. I'm afraid we don't get much call for toys. No. You know they've been dragging the Wheatstone Pond up at the Abbey Ruin. Oh, they found the girl's body, by the way. Margie Duff. That's the fifth suicide in as many years down there. Poor kid. It's just that the police divers have come up with some ends and... Let me guess. 
bottles. <laughs> Dozens of unsellable Victorian bottles. <laughs> yes, and a couple of old model sailing yachts, which is where I got interested. But I thought you might want to look at the motorbike. The police were going to chuck it, but it might be worth something. And well, yours was the first shop I found. What kind of bike? Well, not my field, but uh, 1930s, I'd say. You can make out a word on the petrol tank. It looks like squirrel. Squirrel? Mm. A Scott flying squirrel? Mm. They're rarer than hen's teeth. The curious thing is, it's almost perfectly preserved. They say the Wheatstone Pond used to be the fish pond of the old abbey. Hard to imagine the abbots of Abingdon fattening their perch and pike in this, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The old syringes and condoms are most attractive. They stink. Mm. Time was, in Edwardian days, when it was the height of fashion. I've got photos of the gents of the Neptune Club, all sporting boaters and blazers, selling the most elaborate model yachts here. So their losses may be the museum's gain. Uh, the bike's here, under the top hauler. It's a Scott squirrel, all right. I think you've just handed me a blank check. I owe you. My pleasure. See what I mean about the preservation? Yeah, it's probably the lack of oxygen in the water. And heaven knows how many feet of slime there is down there. Mm. There's a lot of stuff down there, and none of it fit for human consumption. I'm calling my divers off. Bleak afternoon, Morgan. Hello, Tom. How's crime? <laughs> Thriving. How's the bric-a-brac game? Oh, I mustn't grumble. I've just been handed a vintage motorcycle. Mm. Oh, uh, Tom, this is Miss... Uh... Stoddart, hello. The I couldn't and Miss uh, Thames Valley Police. Mm. Nasty business, this. Mm, have your divers come up with anything? Only the poor girl's body. Well, at least it'll be the last suicide here. The council has finally decided to fill the pond in. The fire brigade stop pumping it out tomorrow. Might be more goodies to me, then. And the county museum. Oh, you're the lady from the museum? Yeah. Then the contents of this bag might interest you. My, my lad's found it. Some sort of tin plate boat. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't get too close. Uh, niffs a bit. Uh, Morgan, did you know anything about Margie Dove? No, oh, she came to the shop now and then. More for a bit of a chat than anything else. She used to live in one of those bedsits in Abbey Walk Road. Mm. And apparently had no family and no friends. Sad. Oh, well. Uh, word of warning, Miss Stoddart, if you're tempted to buy anything from his shop. Uh, just remember, all that glisters is not gold. Be seeing you, Morgan. <laughs> Same old jokes. <laughs> right, let's get the bike in the pickup. Uh, look, I can't go on calling you Mr Morgan. What's your name? Uh, Jeff. I don't like it much. People just call me Morgan. You? Hermione. And I do like it. <laughs> now, I assume you have a workshop. Can I come back and clean up whatever's in this bag? Yes, of course. You can meet James. James? My partner. The best restorer in the business. Huh. Very surprising man is James. There you are, Mr Morgan. One Regency side table with four original legs. Except that two of them aren't. What did you use this time, James? Acid or cat's pee? Three layers of black coffee, one of lemon juice and Worcester sauce mix. Eureka! Well, thank you, Inspector Crittenden. I bet some little boy cried when this sank. Oh, a Hornby speedboat, <laughs> isn't it? Pre-war. Number four? With two cockpits, one of the rarest. Tin plate and... Hardly any rust, like the bike. What's in that lake? A lot more like this with any luck. <laughs> what did you make of the Scott Squirrel? Oh, front forks are a bit bent and it'll want new electrics, but well, the engine's not seized off, only once blowing out. Weird. Worth a couple of grand to a collector. Do we auction it or shall I put the word out? Put the word out. Saves the commission. <laughs> are you, um, keeping the speedboat? I'll give you a fair price. There's more to this life than money, Morgan. Is there? She's right. Filthy lucre. The love of it is the root of all evil. How well up on the good book are you, Hermione? Uh, pass. James here does the odd spot of lay preaching, don't you, old son? Oh, really? How do you square that with cobbling up Regency side tables? Have you not heard the parable of the talents? <laughs> but I don't drink or smoke, and I don't commit adultery. Not since I was in the army, at any rate. Good day, miss. Bye. <laughs> 
<laughs> Want a coffee? Oh, no, thanks. I need to email the museum, get the details of this little beauty straight onto the catalogue. Can I use your computer? Ah. Sorry, but you'll never get me up in one of those things. I'm an unreconstructed bits of paper man myself. <laughs> I see. Look, um, if anything else comes out of that pond, perhaps I could use your workshop for cleaning or restoring? Mm, sure. Um, Hermione, I... I wonder... Would you... Yes, I'd love to have lunch. Next week. Thank you. I really think you should try your medication. It'll help the anxiety. Later. Rose, you knew I remembered the pond, didn't you? Of course I did. Oh, yes. But memory is very selective. We all consciously forget things if they're inconvenient. But sometimes the mind shuts down unconsciously to protect us from a difficult or painful memory. And I have to unlock my mind, confront the pain and live happily ever after. Yes, I know the theory. You know, ever since I was a kid, I've had a recurring dream about some children laughing and a fire somewhere, but I don't remember ever seeing one. There was a fire recently, so big they must have seen it in Swindon. One of those old houses in Abbey Walk Road. A man was killed. There used to be a house there. The back garden overlooked the lake. When we were kids, we'd dare each other to climb the fence and run up and touch the house. There were always rumours about the place. Silly things. Oh, I've heard them. Look, I've other patients to see. I've left you a notebook and a pencil. Jot down anything that comes to you. But where do I start? How about with Miss Duddart? I always did love a good romance. Romance? I wish. Well, I suppose the toast ought to be the Neptune Boating Club. Yes. <laughs> mm. Only one week. And the county museum is better off by a speedboat, a three-foot carvel yacht, and an 1890s clockwork German cruiser, probably by Markland. And what have I got? A pram. <laughs> Come on. How much did that hooray from the city give you for the bike? 3,000 cash? Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> well, that's why I can afford lunch here. Well, and I gave you that warship this morning. It's no use to us, but it is hand-built. Homemade, you mean? Take some restoring. It's practically burnt out. And the radio control's a mess. James and I reckon it belonged to Tony Tanner. He was a local nutter, mad about boats. Anyway, about ten years ago, there was the usual Guy Fawkes bonfire down by the pond. And Tanner chose that night of all nights to launch his pride and joy. First, the crowd cheered. Then someone lobbed a firework at it. And suddenly, all these middle-class citizens, me included, were throwing fireworks till it caught fire and sank. It was as if something had taken us over. Mob hysteria, I suppose. Maybe. But it's odd. I've got a student helping me, Rory. Well, two days ago, a dog wriggled under the fence they put round the pond, and Rory went berserk grabbed a stick and began clubbing the animal, yelling like a madman. Totally out of character. The fireman pulled him off, and when he came to, he was horrified, and he said something had made him do it. Well, probably the stench got to him. Mm. That muck in the pond, it's like some sort of fungus. I wonder they don't pump the water straight into the river. Oh, not allowed to. But apparently it's OK to siphon it into the drainage system. <laughs> don't I know it. <laughs> This conversation isn't very romantic, is it? I, uh, I see you wear a wedding ring. And Mrs. Morgan... Died. Ten years ago. Look, um, I'm, I, I'm a bit out of practice, but, um, I, I really like you. Oh, God. Morgan, I'm sorry about your wife. But I may as well say now that... That your interest in antiques stops at toys, right? <laughs> You're not an antique. But I am serious about my work. I've organised digs in Turkey, Jordan, the Middle East. And I've applied for a fellowship in archaeology at Illinois University. I don't have room for anything else. I'm sorry. Pity. 
I'd have given you 10% off. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? James? Oh, nearly, just finishing. When? In good nick? Yeah, I know they fetch a price, but it might be dodgy. Oh, 20 minutes. See you. Oh, well, your student friend Rory has just fished out an interesting item. Not another boat. No. A gun. It's an Enfield 45 revolver, 1920s. In good nick, of course. Two shots fired and the remains of other cartridges. I suppose we should be good boys and let Crittenden have a look. And what are we going to do with Tanner's boat? I suppose it's worth repairing. Of course, one is morally bound to seek the owner. How well did you know, Tanner? Morally bound? A lamb returned to the fold, praise be. Plus, you don't want to go up the steps for selling stolen property. <laughs> <laughs> Why, well, I knew Tanner slightly. Went to his place once to persuade him to come to a meeting. He threw a brick at me. He had a bed sit in Abbey Walk, a, a Bellevue house, I think. The one with domes on the roof with spikes, like a, a German helmet. Same place as Margie Duff. James, don't you think it's a bit odd, the amount of stuff coming out of that pond? And it's only half empty. Well, uh, don't forget, boat clubs were popular right up to the 50s. What's niggling me is the condition of the things. Well, it's the lack of oxygen, stuff wrapped in weeds, you know. You sound like a man trying to convince himself. I think I'll stroll up to Bellevue House later. You want me to come with you? What for? Oh, no reason. It was late afternoon when I shut the shop and walked up to Bellevue House. I pushed open the rusty gate. There were weeds in the gravel drive. I walked up the steps to the front door and peered in at the hall. The place looked abandoned. There were six or seven bell pushes. Margaret Duff. Abbey Walk Fitted Kitchens. Annette Lefebvre. Ah, A. Tanner. Give it a try. Hmm. Not a sound. I walked across to the old stable block. The window was cobwebbed, but I could make out a couple of suitcases and what seemed to be a model light ship in a glass case. This might be a stroke of luck. Better have a word with Mossy. The door was locked and the window too small to get through. I walked round to the back garden and I remember seeing a sort of white growth on the cellar walls. I looked down the garden and across to the Wheatstone Pond. Then everything went still. And I heard, or thought I heard, voices. Papa, shall we sail the boat today? Shall you be the captain, Papa? Oh, yes, my little ones, yes. We shall all sail away together. <laughs> Hello? There's someone there? Who is it? Honestly, hearing voices at my age. I shivered and walked away. When I got home, there was a message to see Tom Crittenden first thing in the morning. That's right. And it wasn't good news. It's about that motorbike you sold, Morgan, to a Mr. Nicholas Charles Hawkes. Was it in a roadworthy condition? I'm an antiques dealer, Tom, not a garage. But it had passed its police checks, you know that. You wouldn't take it on the motorway. Just the odd spin at a vintage rally, maybe. Now, look, it was all above board. All right, calm down, I'm just asking. What sort of a man did Mr. Hawkes strike you as? He struck me as a man with a wallet stuffed full of cash. Has he been complaining? He's unlikely to do that. He's dead. What? According to his wife, he got up in the middle of the night and insisted on going for a ride. Took a corner too fast. No helmet, thank you, and good night. Quite out of character, apparently. Out of character? 
Seems to be a lot of that about. The student and the dog. Yeah. Is there something in that pond, do you imagine? I'm a policeman, Morgan. <laughs> they tell me I have no imagination. They're going to finish draining that stinking thing tomorrow, and frankly, I won't be sorry. Oh, uh, did James bring that gun down? Oh, you mean only Joe, the great faker? Yes, yes, he swans in, dumps an Enfield on my desk and tells me my sins will find me out. <laughs> <laughs> A forensic have had a bit of luck on the computer records. The bullets match two taken from the body of a Mr Solomon Hertz, who was murdered on the towpath between Abingdon and Wallingford in 1922. Really? He had a store in the covered market in Oxford, specialised in books on the occult. <laughs> Look, I I'm sorry about the guy on the bike. Um, I'd best go. I've got a business meeting at the Broad Face at lunchtime. Not with Mossy Hughes by any chance. I worry about the company you keep, Morgan. There you are, Mr. Morgan. Pint of Morelands. What in your eye? Cheers, Mossy. Oh, D.I. Crittenden sends his regards. Yeah. Please, don't mention the law. It brings on my rash. <laughs> now, Tony Tanner. Of course I remember him. He still owes me 50 quid. I went round with a couple of colleagues years back to politely discuss the matter and found he'd disappeared. Annoying, that. I don't like to keep my books straight. The light ship in the stable block must have been his. I wonder what all that stuff's doing there. Shot by the landlord, I dare say, when tenants did a flit. Tanner used to come in here, you know, and bore you to death about model boats. He even said he wanted to be made really small so he could sail them himself. <laughs> case. Anyway, how can I help? Need a bit of advice, Mossy. For instance, if someone came into my shop with, say, that light ship, I'd give him two C's and no questions. What worries me is vandals. Hmm. I mean, the stuff ought to be safe for posterity. Now, the door's bolted, but there is a window a smallish bloke could wriggle through. My nephew spots a smallish bloke. Funny, that. <laughs> so, how do you think United will get on this season? Oh. Go and sit on the bench, lad. That's it. It's enough to make anyone puke. James? Am I any? What's going on? Hi, Morgan. What's the matter with him? What are the police doing here? Miss Stoddard and the boy dug up something not very nice. Not very nice is an understatement. Well, there you are, Morgan. Just the man I want. Do you think you can identify this? Uh, well, it's a crucifix. A silver crucifix. What the hell's going on? I know it's a crucifix. We found it round the neck. Can you identify the mark? What? Uh. Hmm. No. Not one I recognise. I'd have to look it up. Maybe foreign. What do you mean, round the neck? Come over to the car. Easy, Mr. Morgan. You went over to the police car and there was a box in the boot, yes? Not strictly a box. Crittenden gently lifted off the lid. Dear God. Is it a baby? Skeleton of a young child. Murder, I'm afraid. Oh. There was a kitchen knife jammed between the ribs. Bits of clothing still attached. And that skull. That pathetic skull. Not a pretty sight, is it? Oh, there's some evil bastards in the world. Or some desperate mothers. Don't anyone breathe a word about this. Just before Crittenden put the lid back, James made the sign of the cross over the skull. Suffer the little children to come unto me. We're getting somewhere, Mr Morgan. You've not remembered this before. I went home and looked up the hallmark. Belgian, specifically Liège. Next morning, I, th I think it was, Mossy came round to the shop and provided some light relief. 
light relief. Where did you get all this stuff, Mr. Hughes? My um, eccentric auntie died suddenly, very sad. Any use to you? Well, the light ship might be worth a few quid. A few quid? Have you seen the nameplate? It's a Ross and make piece, number 1873, worth several hundred. Several hundred? Really? Oh, yeah. And to think, a good friend of mine said he'd only give me two C's for it. Uh, yes, well, perhaps your friend didn't know it was Ross and make piece. What's in the suitcase? Mm, a couple of books, some letters in foreign, and a very nice silver dressing table set. As it's you, Mossy, 300 the lot. Auntie didn't leave much, Mr Morgan. And there's the funeral expenses. 350 and I'm robbing myself. I haven't the heart to argue. Well, well, if it isn't McCavity the cat. Keeping busy, Mossy? D.I. Crittenden. Comical as ever. Yes, just a bit of business with Mr Morgan. Well, uh, I'll be on my way. Better go and see the undertaker. Just sold you this lot, has he? <laughs> I suppose it's hot. Mm, no, no, it belonged to his auntie. She just died. His auntie? <laughs> anyway, I thought you wanted an update on the little child. Oh, the silver marks Belgian, Liège. That's right. Now, forensic. Reckon he was three or four when he died, about ten years ago. We ran a check and found no record of a missing child. And the only Belgian girl who disappeared without trace was a Mademoiselle Annette Lefeuve. Lefeuve? That name's on the door at Bellevue House. Mm -hmm. Well, who owns the place? Some property outfit. Well, name on a letterbox. Can I have a look at the dressing table set? Yeah. Same mark as the crucifix. And these letters are addressed to her. Are they now? You speak French, miss? Oh, a bit. Let's see. Uh, ma chère Annette, my dear Annette, once again I urge you to come home. Your papa is no longer angry. We have found a family who will take your baby. Then something about shame and she must go to mass. And, uh, this one looks like one Annette wrote but never sent. Bellevue House, Abingdon. What on earth is this? Uh, I cannot stand the devilish music. They want me to be a tiny child again. They shall have me, but they will never have my little Francois. I'm going to have to take this stuff away, Morgan. Right, so, uh, OK. <clears throat> oh, by the way. There was a suspect for the murder of our occult friend, Mr. Solomon Hertz. His ex-business partner, a local bigwig, called himself J. Montague Wheeler. Shady character. Never found. Heard the name? No. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Jeff Morgan. Oh, uh, hello, James. They found what? Yes, well, we bring the pickup straight away. Bye. They've finished the draining, and it seems the Wheatstone Pond has been saving its best till last. A boat? Well, glad we're back to boats after the coffin and the gun, Mr Morgan. Ah, but this wasn't any old boat, Rose. This was a perfectly crafted, fully working steam yacht. It was lying on the grass, caked in mud. She is beautiful. That's been only five foot long. Well, there's a brass plate on the deck in her. Oh. Uh, built by Ross and... Uh... Ross and Makepeace. She's got to be worth thousands. Uh, uh, and there's a name painted on the stern. Uh, I can't make it out. Um, Kerr or Sir or something. Circe, a Greek enchantress who turned men into pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal, Morgan. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Look at that deck planking. Mm. And the steering wheel still works. Look, the, the rod is moving, James. <laughs> Boys in their toys. I uh, can't see anything through the bow hatch. The glass is misted up. But I reckon the interior is just as detailed. Well, let's get her down to the workshop and find out. We set her up on some trestles, and very carefully James washed her down. She really is a beauty. Now, you can turn the hose off, James. Right up. 
paintwork looks pristine. Unbelievable. I wonder what scuppered her. There's a small crack below the waterline on the starboard side. Mm. Must have hit a log. Well, I'll see if I can unscrew the arch. I think I can make out some miniature benches in the saloon. <laughs> Come on, James. These screws are locked solid. Uh, might be able to lever it open. Oh. There. It's coming. <laughs> For pity's sake. Are they... <laughs> dolls? Papa, shall we sail the boat today? Shall you be the captain, Papa? Oh, yes, my little ones. Yes. We shall sail away forever. <laughs> Yeah, yes, the dolls. The, they must be plastic dolls. Sorry, plastic hadn't been invented. Ivory, then. Uh, Japanese miniatures were very, very fashionable. Stop babbling, man. It's a joke. James, it must be an obscene joke. Don't touch them! Pull yourself together, Morgan. <gasps> James? They're not ivory, miss. What we're looking at is three miniature skeletons. Human skeletons. There you are. I'm tempted to have one myself. I suppose we ought to ring Tom Crittenden. No. This is nothing to do with the police. But if those things are or were human... I said no. They wouldn't thank you anyway. And the skeletons are human, trust me. We've been friends for 30 years, Mr. Morgan. You don't know much about me, do you? Well, I know you were in the army. But you don't know that I used to run with a gang when I was a kid. Or that in the 60s I was into LSD, acid, oh yeah, all well, that. Uh... And that's when I got in with some funny people. Seemed to lark at the time. Rituals at midnight. Calling out asthma day. Bar. Fortunately, I went in the nick for six months, thieving cars. And that's where I, yeah, all right, found the Lord. What I'm trying to say is, evil is real. Our adversary, the devil, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, well, I hope it keeps fine for him. Oh. Sorry. Listen. I'm going on the knock for a couple of days. Banbury, Leamington, and there's someone I need to see in Birmingham. Don't matter who. In the meantime, do not touch anything in that boat. Don't go near it, OK? I don't need telling. Give me another scotch. We'll make that too, James. I just rang the curator of the museum. I said we'd finished at the pond. I didn't tell him about the Circe. Don't tell anyone. I'll... Uh, Take the van, Mr. Morgan. Um, you're going to be all right here tonight. I mean, on your own. He won't be on his own. He's coming home with me. Very nice house, Hermione. <sighs> uh, what's the tune? Uh, the tune is Bach's Cello Suite Number no. One. The sanest music I know. Ah, gotcha. What are you doing? Looking up Ross and Makepeace on the web. And bingo, here they are, see? Ross and Makepeace manufacturers of precision instruments, Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. Well, it must be then. But they may have records. Oh, it's not far away. I'll ring them in the morning. Morgan, believe me, I'm as shocked as you. I know. Come on. It's getting late. I'll be all right on the sofa. I'm not going to sleep anyway. Oh, yes, you are. And in my bed. I don't want to be alone either. Morgan. Morgan. <laughs> no! Oh. Oh, it's okay, Morgan. Oh. Shush, shush. 
Oh, it's a recurring dream. I hear these voices. Oh, it's all right. Oh, I'm sorry to wake you. I'll go and sit downstairs. No, no, no. Stay here. Kiss me. But I thought you said... Kiss me, Morgan. I was glad not to be alone that night. Very glad. <laughs> Next morning, we drove down to Cheltenham and were shown into an office. Behind an Edwardian roll-top desk, probably worth 500, sat the huge, cheerful figure of Mr. Simon Makepeace, the founder's grandson. Ah, yes. Come in, come in. Uh, Miss Studder to Mr. Morgan, isn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, sit you down, sit you down. I must say, it's wonderful to find a Makepeace still with the firm. <laughs> I'm 81. Don't look it, do I? And I'll die behind this desk. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still involved in model making? No, more's the pity. Bottom fell out of the market in 1939. Transferred to munitions, and then these bloodless scientific thingamajigs. Still, they turn a good few sovereigns. So, you've found a Circe, eh? Oh, I never saw her. Sank when I was mewling and puking. But I looked her up, got all the records. And she cost 400 guineas in 1922. Imagine! <laughs> Damned fool had more money than sense. Grandpapa couldn't stand him. And who was this damn fool? Uh, 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 here we are. J. Montague Wheeler. <sighs> you all right, Mr. Morgan? Gone a bit pale. It's an amazing coincidence, but... Uh... Apparently, Mr. Wheeler was the chief suspect of an unsolved murder. Doesn't surprise me. I looked out a photograph of the old Neptune Club for you. Sepia. Lovely colour. Here. Foxy-looking chap with two children. Two children? Yeah. On the end of the row. Yeah, that's Wheeler. Nasty piece of work, ain't he? And to cap it all, the bounder did a flit, vanished overnight with his family. <sighs> Grandpapa reckoned he was Doolally. The man was so obsessed with the Circe, it was as though he wanted to become tiny, like Alice, and sail the damned thing himself. That's what Tony Tanner told Mossy. Now, I've got to see her. I can drive myself up this afternoon. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Morgan's still got quite a bit of work to do. Yeah, well, fair enough. You obviously want to sell, so I'll buy sight unseen. Uh, 12,000. No bargaining. 12,000? I'll uh, have to consult my employers. Uh, yeah. Do you happen to have an address for Wheeler? Yeah, it's all here. Though I doubt he'll be in. <laughs> yes, um, I, his address was... Let me guess. Bellevue House, Abbey Walk, Abingdon. Spot on. You clairvoyant, young fellow. Yes, Mr. Makepeace. I rather think he may be. Twelve thousand pounds. I hope James locked the workshop. No one's going to steal a boat with those things on board. Oh, excellent. Just what we want. Can you find out anything on that thing? And the internet? Oh, yeah, modern magic. I've already confirmed from the census page that Wheeler was the builder and occupier of Bellevue House. And now I'm on the website of the Oxford Times for 1922. Take a look. Mysterious disappearance of prominent Abingdon family. J. Montague Wheeler, widower, age 53. Two sons. 13 and 9. Well-known member of Neptune Club. Police wish to interview in connection with yesterday's murder of Mr. Solomon Hearns. So, he's involved in the occult, makes himself small and escapes justice by hiding in his boat. Case closed. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Wait. What did Annette Lefebvre write? Uh, <laughs> they want me to be a tiny child again. What did you mean about my being clairvoyant? Well, your dreams. You heard the same voices when you were up in the garden at Abbey Walk. I think you should take another look around. No way. And certainly not in the dark. But you may be able to, I don't know, pick up things other people can't. 
I'll come with you and we'll have torches. <sighs> okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Hermione? Mm hmm. Last night. What about it? Well, does it mean. It means it was very nice, Morgan. But it doesn't change anything. Sorry. Will you look at this entrance hall? Art Deco wallpaper. Chandelier. Stained glass window. The staircase is a bit over the top. Evidently, Wheeler's purse exceeded his taste. Where this door leads. It's probably the cellar. Don't go down there. Some sort of white slime coming out of the wall. Yeah, I know. The same stuff that was in the pond. Come back up. It's only a few steps. I just want to shine the torch around. There might be something. Hermione, please. You're all right. We shouldn't have gone. I'm sorry. It was so real. I can't believe you didn't see. I told you, I saw nothing. You said in the cellar you found something. Yes. Under an old mattress. Two tiny skeletons. Oh God. They had remnants of clothes. One man, the other a woman. And she was clutching a silver crucifix. Annette and Tana. Mm-hmm. Oh, what are we going to do? I don't know. But while you were sleeping, I went back to the internet and I found a link from the Oxford Times to the London Evening News for 1922, which mentioned Wheeler in a feature called Strange Stories. It appears that there were several complaints from residents in Abbey Walk about strange lights and sounds coming from Bellevue House. And no one was ever seen coming or going from that place except one man, and then only on the nights of the weird happenings. Step forward, Mr. Solomon Hertz, <sighs> dealer in occult books. But why did Wheeler murder him? Oh, who knows? Perhaps Hertz knew too much about a respected member of society. <gasps> oh, relax. I'll look through the spy hole. Uh-huh. Two midnight gentlemen. Hello, James. Come in. This is Mr. Maidment, a colleague from Birmingham. Good evening. Now, James has apprised me of the facts so far, and I have seen the contents of the boat in your workshop. Excuse me. Who are you? Someone who has made a lifelong study of certain phenomena. Now, 
If you want my help, you must tell me everything that has occurred. I suspect that what happened was this. The house was built on the site of the old abbey, and the monks discovered too late that there was some evil there. I do not use the word evil loosely, probably invoked in pagan times. They could not exorcise it, but what they could do was to keep it under a sort of spiritual lock and key, a binding prayer, it's called. Come the dissolution, the monks leave, but the malignant spirit stays. The white fungus you saw is its physical manifestation, flowing into the lake and accounting for the suicides and general irrational behaviour. Yeah, fascinating, but we are in the 21st century. Oh, indeed. A century in which you discover miniature human bones and Mr Morgan undergoes experiences which to him are as real as this chair. What do we do, Mr Maidment? Burn the boat? Uh, burning the boat is not enough. It will not solve the larger problem of destroying the spirit itself. The entire house must be fired. <laughs> Are you telling us to commit arson? I am. I'm not ordinary fire. It must be fire to the foundations. Fire beneath the foundations, for that, I believe, is the seat of the evil. Fire that will drip and cling and go on burning. Greek fire, such as the Byzantines used. Phosphorus and pitch? Where on earth do we get that? There is a modern equivalent, such as, shall we say, certain activists use. Would that be suitable? The substance to which you are referring will, I think, be more than suitable. Miss Stoddart and Mr Morgan, we have never met. I trust I make myself clear. I wish you well. Good night, James. We can't do this. If we don't, that house or any other built on the site will remain a source of madness and suicide. Now, I've an idea of how to fire the place, but the problem is the Semtex. Semtex? Where do we get that from? Any ideas? Well, perhaps Mossy Hughes has another eccentric auntie. Ring him, Mr Morgan. I'm surprised, Miss Morgan. I wouldn't have had you down as a terrorist. Don't be stupid. Have you had any luck? God, that pot stinks. Good job the council's filling it in. Planting petunias, they say. I like petunias. Got the cash. In the briefcase. A lot of money, Mossy. Ten grand. They don't do special offers on explosives. And there's the electronic timers. Plus the Land Rover at three grand, with plates removed and the engine and chassis numbers filed off. My bloke's delivering it all tomorrow. Where do you want me to bring it? Abbey Walk. Over there is the back garden of Bellevue House. See? Bring it round to the front at about midnight. Oh, Mossy, I can't tell you why. No, I don't want to know. If you intend to blow up Bellevue House, that's your affair. But how precisely are you going to get a Land Rover in there? Through the coal hole? Big French windows at the back. James is up there now, building a ramp over the steps. The floor inside is rotten, so it'll crash straight down to the cellar, which is where we want it to be. I'll look out for the firework display, then. Seems a long time since I brought that tin speedboat into your shop. Creepy up here, isn't it? I can't quite believe we're doing this. It'll all be over in half an hour. Finished and done. There was a distant light in James's eye, as though he had to vanquish Satan and all his works personally. Mossy arrived in the Land Rover on the dot of midnight and scarpered. It's all in here. Chemical drums, Semtex, phosphorus in the carboys. All we've got to do is set the timer. <coughs> There. Five minutes. Right. You two, stay by the gates. I'll line her up with the ramp, put her into first, jump out and join you. We watched as the Land Rover inched forward. James jumped down and ran back to the gates. Come on. We're out of here. Wait. Let's be sure. Yes. She's climbing the ramp. Uh, Go on. Go on. on. It's going to work. It's going to work. Yes. The front bumper brushed the window frame. 
and for a moment it did look as though everything was going to be all right. But then... Damnation! The ramp's given way! Oh, God! That bomb is going to go off out here! No, it isn't. Get out of my way! James, don't be stupid! James shoved us aside, ran to the Land Rover, backed up and launched it at the window. Glass and wood flew everywhere. He's done it! The man's done it! Get out, James! Run, for God's sake! A moment's silence. And then the floor gave way. James was entombed in the cellar. He's trapped, Morgan. He's trapped. I've got to get him out. You stay here. Don't be an idiot. That thing goes up any second. But we can't just leave him there. It's his choice. We stared at the silent house, waiting, helpless. We stood, rooted to the spot. I saw fire dripping from the trees. Morgan, he wouldn't have known a thing. No. I remember tears pouring down Hermione's cheeks. And mine, just staring helplessly. Morgan? Mr. Stoddart? What in God's name are you doing here? Waiting. Waiting. Here. You're not telling me you're responsible for this, are you? Yes. My partner isn't there. Dead now. Have you taken leave of your senses? What are you waiting for? And what is that fire? Napalm? Greek fire. Purifying fire. And what we're waiting for is this. God in heaven. What was that? That is what killed Margie Duff. Tony Tanner. And poor Annette. I should arrest you too, Mother. But you heard that voice. Oh. Catch him! <laughs> Easy, Mr. Morgan. Easy. I could have saved him. I should have tried. Nobody could have saved him. Don't blame yourself. <laughs> What happened after you came round? We went back to the workshop to show Crittenden the boat. The skeletons had disintegrated into piles of dust. I'm very grateful to you, Rose. You're the one who's done the work. I think you're nearly ready to go back home. Last thing to face. Will the dream still come? You may always be able to see things that others can't, Mr. Morgan. Maybe in the future, there'll be happier things. And will you be seeing Miss Doddart again? Yes. She said she'd fly over next spring for the grand opening of the Wheatstone Tennis Courts and Petunia Beds. Maybe. So, perhaps I'll get my romance after all. Another time, another planet. No one would ever know there was once a pond here, would they? No. I'm glad it's going all right in Illinois. I enjoy getting your emails. Oh, we finally got you off in one of those things. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's been good for business. Yeah. I don't know what James would have made of it all. I stripped out the workshop, you know, extended the showroom. We specialise a bit now. Toys. Oh. Great niche market. We? Oui? No, figure of speech. Marcy helps out from time to time. He's brilliant at dealing, but you do have to keep your eye on Till. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> well, let's sit down for a minute. 
What are they building over at Bellevue House? Retirement homes. I hope no one's told them about satanic sex rights. I've got a bit of news. Just before I flew over, a friend from New York rang. I told him all about Abbey Walk, and he'd found a newspaper cutting about a property developer who jumped from a high window last year. On the very night of the fire, in fact. Oh, yes. Shady character, apparently. And quite a few houses in the UK, including Bellevue House. His name was Solomon Hertz III. Solomon Hertz? Mm -hmm. Well, well. And the sins of the fathers? Uh. It kind of puts a full stop to it, doesn't it? Mm. Are you free for dinner tonight? Yes. Morgan, it's not going all right in Illinois. The job's as dry as dust, and the pressure. At the end of my year, I'm coming home. All oh, right. Uh, back to the museum? Oh, no, no, I need something more stimulating. I've got a few grand to invest. I've a knowledge of vintage toys. And I'm a quick learner with a head for business. Funny. I'm looking for someone like that. 50-50? 50-50. And that's my final offer. In the Wheatstone Pond by Robert Westall, dramatised by Martin Reed, Morgan was played by John Dottine, Hermione Teresa Gallagher and James John Webb. Ian Brooker was D.I. Crittenden, Christopher Scott, Mr. Makepeace and Mr. Maidment, Peter Meakin, Mossy Hughes, and Lorna Laidlaw, Rose. The children were Richard Gangevy and Jack Halsey. The play was directed in Birmingham by Rosemary Watts. Mm -hmm.